Hello everyone. In our previous videos, we have studied about the floral whorls. We have the outer accessory whorls, that is the calyx and the corolla, and the inner essential whorls, the stamen and the pistil. We are mainly concerned with the inner essential whorls. So, the stamen is the male reproductive unit of the flower and the pistil is the female reproductive unit of the flower. Let's study about the male reproductive unit of the flower. We have studied about the stamen. The stamen consists of two parts, the anther and the filament. The anther is monolobe, that is it is called as the monothecus or it is bilobe, we call it as dithecus. Monothecus anther consists of two pollen sacs, it is mainly seen in the manvasi family flowers. Whereas the dithecus consists of four pollen sacs. Next, based on the fixation of the filament to the anther, we have seen four types of anther. The basifix, dorsifix, adnate and versatile anther. We have also studied about the transfer section of anther. In the transfer section, we have studied that is the outer layer is the epidermis. Beneath the epidermis, we have the endothelium. Beneath the endothelium, we have two to three layers of parenchyma muscles called as the middle layer. Beneath the middle layer, we have the microsporangium. The microsporangium consists of the tepidal cells. The four main functions of the tepidum is that it plays a very important role in secreting the enzyme called as calase. It nourishes the developing pollen grains. It produces the ubish body called as poropollenin, which forms the exile of the pollen grain and the fourth most important is that it forms the pollen kit. So in the previous chapter we have studied the three events of sexual reproduction. Similarly in the angiosperm that is in the flowering plants we have the three sexual events taking place. One is the pre-fertilization event, double fertilization and the post-fertilization event. As we know in the pre-fertilization event the two important characteristic event takes place. One is the formation of the gametes that is the male gamete and the female gametes takes place and the second thing is the transfer of the gametes. So we are in a process of studying about the male gamete formation. In this before studying that we have to know about the microsporogenesis. In the microsporogenesis we will see how the microspores form, how the microspores gets converted into the pollen grains. The The process of formation of the microspores from the microspore mother cell is called as microsporogenesis. Before studying about microsporogenesis, let's see what happens in the young anther. The young anther consists of the outer epidermis. Beneath the epidermis, we have the endothelium. Beneath the endothelium, we have two to three layers of the middle uh, of the middle layer. These three layers constitute the anther wall. Beneath this middle layer, we have the microsporangium, which consists of the tepidal cells. Inside the tepidal cells, we have the closely packed compact sporogenous cell and these sporogenous cells are called as the archisporial cells. This is the case of the young anther. As the anther matures, what happens? The microsporangium, which is small here, grows in size and it becomes bigger. These microsporangium, when it becomes bigger, the archisporial cells, which is compact here, form space between them. In the mature anther, as the anther matures, these spore, the microsporangium is now called as the pollen sac and the inside archisporial cells which form space between them is called as the microspore mother cell or instead it is called as the pollen mother cell. The pollen mother cell thus form is called as is the diploid in nature. The pollen mother cell which is formed is diploid in nature. You can see your one uh, pollen mother cell which is diploid in nature. Now this pollen mother cell undergo one meiotic division to give rise to the haploid microspores which are packed in a form of a tetrad. We call this as the microspore tetrad. Before seeing the microspore tetrad, let's see the five types of microspore tetrad. The first one is called as the tetrahedral where three are at the front and one is at the back. The second one is the isobilateral type where all the four microspores are at the front. The third one is called as the linear tetrad where the microspores are arranged linearly. And the fourth type is called as the T-shaped tetrad and the fifth is called as the F-shaped or the decusate tetrad. So we have five types of tetrad, tetrahedral, isobilateral, linear tetrad, T-shaped, F-shaped or decusate tetrad. So the most common among this is the tetrahedral 
territory. So, uh, when the pollen mother cell undergo one meiotic division, it undergo the reduction division to give rise to the haploid microspores, which are arranged in a tetrad. We have studied a particular enzyme called has a callose enzyme keeps this microspore tetras together. The tepetal cell secretes the enzyme called has callase. This callase dissolves the microspore tetrad. So you can see one microspore tetrad here. The tetrahedral form of microspore tetrad. Here we have three microspore at the front and one is at the back. Now this microspore is haploid in nature. With the help of the callase enzyme, the microspore tetrad dissolves to give rise to the haploid microspore. You can see the haploid microspore. Now these microspores then undergo uh, mitotic division to give rise to the pollen grains. Now we have studied about the microsporogenesis, how the microspore are formed from the pollen mother cell by one meiotic division. In the next video, let's study about the structure of pollen grains, that is the male gametophyte. Until then, happy learning from edge to all.